I recently bought this Troy built Super Tomahawk 8 horsepower chipper shredder from this great guy up in northern New Hampshire. When he sold it to me, we knew it had a bad carb. It's the typical victim of ethanol gas. If you don't drain these things out, they just ruin them. So this video, we're going to go through how to take the carburetor off. We'll talk a little bit about repairing the carburetor. And ultimately, we're going to talk about replacing it with a new one. This assembly is pretty easy. On this air intake tube, there's a little rubber tube that just kind of pops off the back. The choke lever, got a little spring you'll just pull off. On the bottom of the carburetor, there's a bolt holding it to the engine assembly. Disconnecting the fuel line, just a spring clamp. Back behind the carburetor, just give that a squeeze. Pull it back to the left out of the way. Then disconnect the hose. Have something to catch the leaking fuel in. And then remember, it's probably best practice to actually turn off the fuel shutoff valve. That'll prevent the entire tank uh, from leaking down into your catch-all, which I'm realizing right now. So I'll tempor temporarily set it back on and head to the back of the machine, turn off the fuel valve, and then we'll come back to disconnect the fuel line. Once you've done that, uh, only a small amount of fuel will come out. Just make sure you have something to catch that in, and we can uh, carry on. So I'm using an adjustable wrench here be much easier to grab a actual wrench that fits but this is what I had and uh, this is what I used a little frustrating to watch but we do get there eventually and not everybody has the exact tool for the job so an adjustable wrench in this case works. Now that holds a bracket that goes up into the air cleaner. You can see it. There's that uh, metal shaft that's kind of going up. That's what holds down the, uh, the, air, the air cleaner. We'll screw right into that. We're going to speed this up a little bit because um, I'm getting tired of looking at it too. I imagine you are as well. Keep working it and uh, soon enough we'll have it off and we can move on to the next step. All right, so here's that bracket. That intake housing is held on really two ways. There's one bolt up at the top, and then it is there's an O-ring that actually mounts onto the carburetor. That becomes a pivotal character in the rest of our story here. So I just take my screwdriver and loosening up those two bolts at the top of the carb. There on the right. Again, that's the one holding a little bit longer than the one on the left. We'll put ourselves in fast forward mode here again to save you the screw unturning. But after uh, just a few seconds there, we get that off and get our first look at that carb. Up close, there's a throttle linkage on the back. Just give that carburetor a little bit of a twist. Yeah, there's like a J hook on the end of that linkage. You can just kind of uh, take the carburetor right off of that. And then there's that O-ring that will come up later in our story. A little bit of corrosion there on the top. Uh, not too bad. We'll bring this inside and start taking a look at it uh, up closer. So as with any project I'm taking on, my primary goal would be to fix it. 
as opposed to replacing it. If you're going to fix a carburetor and you're going to take it apart, first thing you should do is screw in all the jets, count the number of turns so that you know when you put it back together how to set it. So screw it in. I think this one was two and a half turns so that when you end up putting it back together, you can thread that all the way in and then back it off the right amount. So this guy's got some corrosion on the tip. Not too bad. Then we have this main jet here on the bottom. Same thing. Half a turn, one turn. Another half. That's one and a half. Get to two. Two and a half turns. And it's bottomed out. So it's just good practice with any carburetor. Lawn mower, weed whacker. Corvette, and then you can go ahead and take it off. So this jet becomes a major player in our story. A little hard to see there, but that that's got corrosion sort of all over it, and nothing you couldn't clean up as long as you could get the rest of it out, which is the problem. So there's this uh, bolt that that needle sets into, and you can see there a little bit. Um, that was really fast. You can see that it is corroded. We're going to go ahead and take that nut off, and we can see right inside the body of the carburetor. The adjustable wrench out. Why not? You've got a toolbox full of the right tools, but yet we're going to use an adjustable wrench. This comes off a little bit faster. All right, so now we can see inside there that that is an ethanol-derived mess of corrosion. And so just confirming that the major problem with this motor is the, is the corrosion. So there's a great video out there, this gentleman who repairs small engines for a living, where he goes ahead and he disassembles this entire carburetor, puts it back, and it's running as good as new. That didn't work out for me. So instead, we bought this. From Amazon. Now Amazon can solve a lot of your problems. In this case I could not find an exact match carburetor for what I was looking for. I'm gonna link to the one that I bought in the description because you may be in the same situation that I am and you can go through it. So it looks like a decent kit. It's got a new air filter, new fuel line, got a some sort of a, a fuel filter and a new shutoff valve which surprised that those things were included but so here's the carb and on the surface with any of these things it looks it looks good we're gonna find out uh, devils in the details a little bit uh, to cut ahead to the to what we're gonna be looking at that that major intake um, the one right there where the air is coming in from that air cleaner. That ended up being a little bit of a problem. The spark plug that they sent is not the right spark plug. Again, it was a $25 kit. All I wanted was the carb, but all this other stuff came with it. And, of course, they throw in a gasket, too. So we're going to go through next here uh, just, just the reassembly, and then we can uh, start to see... You know, where I ran, ran into a few problems. Number one, the screws that they send you are metric. And so we took off uh, those screws from that manifold that goes into the engine. Those are standard American threaded. The new carburetors, all of the carburetors on Amazon have this problem. I think they're M6. You need an M6 20 millimeter 
two of them so that you can remount the carb to your engine. So that's the number one, the number one issue. Second thing that I had with this is the choke lever doesn't have a drilled out hole on it for the spring to always hold it in the open position. However, the choke itself does have spring on the nut that's kind of in the shaft that's the choke flutters on. And that is feels very sturdy, so you can open it and close it as you need to and it'll stay open. Again, hook up the linkage uh, there in the back. My gasket and, you know, I've got some M6 bolts that I used to secure it to the... Uh, now right now I'm thinking the that there's another gasket up underneath there. Didn't quite, didn't quite feel right. Take a little closer look, but I think my hand was just kind of playing tricks on me because I didn't see or, or feel anything else that felt like another gasket that was stuck up inside there. You're going to want to make sure that all those surfaces are clean, so that you have, especially on this section of that gasket is clean and that the mating surfaces are clean. So I've checked that out. It looks good to go. So reassembly is the reverse of installation. However, I forgot about the air cleaner assembly. So I've gone through this whole process and really should have included that air cleaner assembly. There's the adjustable wrench again. Gotta love that. Tighten up the box. So from here, what I ended up doing is swapping out the fuel line. In retrospect, I don't think I would have done this. I think I just would have left the fuel line that was on there. But it was old. Fuel lines can crack. It's right next to the exhaust. I figured better safe than sorry. So, you know, going through a process here to get that fuel line installed, but also get it to the right length. What I'm not realizing here is that the having to put the air cleaner housing back on and I'm just realizing that now actually first we're going to clean it because it's dirty take out the bottom bolt so that you can put that bracket back on Not remembering that I need to undo the top bolt on the top of the manifold. I just pointed to it. Take that guy off. Now it gets interesting. Because now I'm realizing something's going on. Okay, so the carburetor housing that the air cleaner is supposed to slide onto is too small. This is where I could not find online the exact match for the machine uh, that we have. So, trying to think about a way to make these two connect so that they'll have a, a bit of a better fitting. So this prototype that you're seeing me drop now, I used some rubber that I had, just one layer with some electrical tape wrapped around it, but it was too thick. What I ended up going with was three rounds of electrical tape right around the housing. I retained the O-ring that was there, and it actually worked out okay. So here's the carburetor installed. We've already kind of gone through that installation earlier in the video and I think you saw some of the the watch outs now when I went to start this up you know most 
of these carburetors, you can just, they plug and play. Mine was not idling properly. So the simple fix was on that main needle valve jet here that I've circled. Just a couple of turns, about a, about a turn and a half with the uh, counterclockwise, opening it up. And you could set the idle right away. So this doesn't work for you out of the box. Adjust that screw and you can dial in the, the idle that you're looking for. And it ended up working out really well.